Hello and welcome to another Star Citizenship Buyer's Guide looking at the Drake Vulture concept sale, its vital statistics and gameplay. Answer to no one, cut out the middleman and throw caution to the wind. Rip wrecks apart like a pro and carve out your own place in the big empty with the help of Drake Interplanetary's one-man salvage monster. Get a taste of the lone wolf lifestyle before going all in with Drake. So the Drake Vulture is intended and focused at being a one-person salvage vessel. The ship is on concept until the 18th of July and is available in standalone for $120 in Warbond, which also comes with lifetime insurance, or $140 if you're using any store credit with six months insurance. It's also available in a larger Drake pack, including a Vulture, Caterpillar, Dragonfly, and Cutlass Black, from $550. There is a pirate skin alternative to the pack too if you've completed Pirate Swarm on the live servers. The ship is available as a CCU or an upgrade as well, so you can upgrade a existing ship or package, keeping the original pack's content, insurance, etc. It only changes the hull, so you could upgrade uh, your starter pack with an Aurora or Mustang into the Vulture if you wanted to, or whatever. Uh, vital statistics, it has 12 SCU of cargo, which is mainly reserved for process salvage. The ship does transform for landing with its arms moving. It has the trifecta of systems focused at salvage, dual scraper beams, a tractor beam, and a grinder processor. The arms act as a tractor beam, pulling in small pieces of scrap into the grinder at the front of the ship. It has a scrapper beam as well for stripping a hulls of useful materials and turning that into scrap. The ship does not use gravlev, even though it looks like a dragonfly. It does have VTOL and normal thrusters though. The ship has two size one hard points, so not that much in the way of weaponry. It has medium armor, but relatively weak shields. It's not something that you want to have a fight in, basically. It's 33 meters long, 16 meters wide, and 9 meters tall. So it's about 10% longer than a Cutlass, but thinner than it, as it has no real wingspan. It's a little wider than the Prospector. It has a SCM speed of 165, which is in between that of the Prospector at 155, and the Cutlass at 170. It has... VTOL thrusters, um, so it can maneuver pretty well on planets, and 24 maneuvering thrusters, so expect it to be pretty agile. It does have a bed and a toilet, as well as fuel intakes, so the ship is seen to be able to operate at quite a long range. Entry and exit of the ship can be done via the rear cargo door, as well as climbing onto one of the arms and then getting into the cockpit from there. The Prospector is the loner ship for the Vulture until it's flyable. Its components are all small on the ship, other than its main thruster, which is medium, and expect all of its components basically to be civilian class C. So nothing exceptional when it comes to its components. Gameplay-wise, the Vulture is intended to give players the starting career level into solo salvage operations. You're going to be able to ping and scan like mining to find scrap or just luckily find salvage as you're moving around in the verse or even come back to an area that you've previously murdered loads of NPCs and players in to nom all of that salvage up. Once you've chosen a target that you want to salvage, really you'll need to manually remove any high value cargo, components and weapons by hand, literally detaching the components, picking them up in EVA and then bringing them back to your ship to store them in your cargo bay. You'll then use your salvage lasers, your scraper beam, uh, to strip hulls of ships or resources. Uh, you can do this even if there's active players in the ship, um, though disabling the ship might be recommended first. Then you can use salvage charges, which will be purchasable as an FPS item, uh, to blow parts off the ship in a um, sort of like more constructive way. Um, if you just start shooting bits off the ship, they might fly over everywhere and that sort of stuff. So salvage charges are controlled explosions and then they create more manageable parts that the Vulture can use its tractor beam arms on to actually pull it into the grinder at the front and then turn any salvage that comes into that grinder into refined salvage cubes, which are then stored in the cargo area. The ship is viable to work um, in packs or with other ships as well and you could have an additional person on that ship as well but uh, i'm not sure how much pressure that would put on your life support systems so if you are running it as a duo then maybe bring an extra oxygen tank or, or undersuit or something the cockpit overlooks the arms 
uh, which shouldn't obstruct the pilot's view much at all. The antenna on top of the ship is there just to look cool, nothing else. You can shoot parts off ships, as I said, rather than using salvage charges, though that could mean that salvage is lost and the salvage goes everywhere. The ship is relatively small and can run pretty quiet when not salvaging. Unprocessed scrap can be picked up or transported by other people on other ships. You don't need a vulture, but you can't process it unless you have a processing plant. So it doesn't really have a value unless you can process it. And obviously it's probably pretty, pretty cheap uh, unless you can compact it. I love the fact that they seem to be getting a small, medium and large version of each of the major professions in game where sensible. So with this, you're going to be able to assist in larger salvage operations in the vulture if the claimers are flying about or if you're with multiple vultures in a pack you're going to be able to clean up after large battles you're going to see these in a lot of fleets and um, small fleets are going to need them to make fighting worthwhile so after you've won a battle you get your vulture in to norm up the fighters or whatever and um, obviously if it's a huge battle you want reclaimers or a fleet of vultures but in smaller fleets yeah it just makes uh, fighting more efficient it's worth remembering that salvage charges and the removal of components by hand and then transport of that does not require a vulture at all. And they will be um, the salvage charges purchasable separately um, in game. And the removal of components by hand can be done pretty much by anyone. Um, I, maybe you need like a welding tool or something, but um, we'll see that in the future. The vulture fills a hole in the verse, certainly. I look forward to seeing the first salvage mechanics coming in 3.3 in September. However, this ship won't be ready by then. Please remember that all of the ships will be available in-game at some point with in-game money, um, at least upon release. And sooner to that, purchasable ships will be in-game with Alpha UEC, the in-game currency in Alpha. Um, that will be coming in the very near future. If you love the idea of salvage in the game and you want to do it solo, you want to do it in a small fleet, you want a, an additional ship that um, complements a fleet, a small combat fleet or whatever, so that you're going to be making money after you win engagements, then the Vulture probably is for you. It's going to be a lot of people's first foray into that salvage mechanic. And it might be good to use one before you start trying to tout around the giant reclaimer, which is going to re require more crew realistically, or at least a bit more knowledge to use effectively. Those larger ships are going to be kind of cash sinks if you don't use them correctly. They're big, they're valuable, they get damaged, or you need to maintain them, or just use them on a daily basis. You need to make money with them, otherwise you might be losing more money uh, in-game than you make. But tell me what you think. Do you like the idea of the Vulture? Do you think it's going to be great? Uh, do you think it's no place in the verse or not, at least not in your fleet because you want to do uh, pure combat or you want to do another mechanic or do you not see um, the benefit of using them in these small fleets to, to try and make some extra money? Do you want to just be paid for your escort missions and actually uh, bounty hunting and killing people, but you don't necessarily um, have the time to come back and salvage all the ships afterwards? Whatever your opinion, tell me in the comments below. This month's featured spotlight is the Daymar Rally, and they're giving away a rally pack of a Tumbrel Cyclone and an Aegis Vulcan, which coincidentally is all the hardware you need to enter the rally. The Daymar Rally is an annual community organized event which is set to have its inaugural endurance race on the 27th of January 2019. There will be three divisions over a 300 kilometer course set on Crusader's Moon Daymar. It is an in-game event and I am very much up for these. A four-person crew can sign up their team now with a ground vehicle and support vehicle. More info, the sign up and complete rulebook can be found on daymarrally.com. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that rally pack though is to be subscribed to my channel and comment on any of my videos throughout June. One per video, each video gives you another chance to win. Also, I'm working with Shadow, which is a cloud-based subscription gaming PC service that gives you an alternative to upgrading, but also as a gaming PC anywhere. I'm trying to make the service as Star Citizen friendly as possible, but please check that out again in the description below if you're interested. And using the promo code BOARDGAMER will give you a discount too if you decide that you like it. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me. And I'll see you in the verse.